أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم O mankind, reverence your guardian lord who created you from a single person, created of like nature his mate, and from them too scattered like seeds, countless men and women. Fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and reverence the wombs that bore you, for Allah ever watches over you. To orphans restore their property when they reach their age, nor substitute your worthless things for their good ones, and devour not their substance by mixing it up with your own, for this is indeed a great sin. If you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphans, marry women of your choice, two or three or four. But if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with them, then only one or a captive that your right hands possess. That will be more suitable to prevent you from doing injustice. And give the women on marriage their dower as a free gift. But if they of their own good pleasure remit any part of it to you, take it and enjoy it with right good cheer. To those weak of understanding, make not over your property which Allah has made a means of support for you, but feed and clothe them therewith and speak to them words of kindness and justice. Make trial of orphans until they reach the age of marriage. If then you find sound judgment in them, release their property to them, but consume it not wastefully, nor in haste against their growing up. If the guardian is well off, let him claim no remuneration. But if he is poor, let him have for himself what is just and reasonable. When you release their property to them, take witnesses in their presence. But all sufficient is Allah in taking account. From what is left by parents and those nearest related, there is a share for men and a share for women, whether the property be small or large, a determinate share. But if at the time of division other relatives or orphans or poor are present, feed them out of the property and speak to them words of kindness and justice. Let those disposing of an estate have the same fear in their minds as they would have for their own if they had left a helpless family behind, let them fear Allah and speak words of appropriate comfort. Those who unjustly eat up the property of orphans eat up a fire into their own bodies. They will soon be enduring a blazing fire. Allah thus directs you as regards your children's inheritance to the male a portion equal to that of two females. If only daughters, two or more, their share is two-thirds of the inheritance. If only one, her share is a half. For parents, a sixth share of the inheritance to each, if the deceased left children. If no children, and the parents are the only heirs, the mother has a third. If the deceased left brothers or sisters, the mother has a sixth. The distribution in all cases is, after the payment of legacies and debts, you know not whether your parents or your children are nearest to you. In benefit, these are settled portions ordained by Allah, and Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. In what your wives leave, your share is a half, if they leave no child. But if they leave a child, you get a fourth, after payment of legacies and debts. In what you leave, their share is a fourth. If you leave no child, but if you leave a child, they get an eighth, after payment of legacies and debts. If the man or woman whose inheritance is in question has left neither ascendants nor descendants, but has left a brother or a sister, each one of the two gets a sixth. But if more than two, they share in a third. After payment of legacies and debts, so that no loss is caused to anyone, thus is it ordained by Allah, and Allah is all-knowing, most forbearing. Those are limits set by Allah. Those who obey Allah and His Messenger will be admitted to gardens with rivers flowing beneath, to abide therein forever, and that will be the supreme achievement. But those who disobey Allah and His Messenger and transgress His limits will be admitted to a fire to abide therein, and they shall have a humiliating punishment. If any of your women are guilty of lewdness, take the evidence of four reliable witnesses from among you against them, and if they testify, confine them to houses until death do claim them, or Allah ordain for them some other way. If two men among you are guilty of lewdness, punish them both. If they repent and amend, leave them alone, for Allah is oft returning, most merciful. Allah accepts the repentance of those who do evil in ignorance and repent soon afterwards, 
To them will Allah turn in mercy, for Allah is full of knowledge and wisdom. Of no effect is the repentance of those who continue to do evil, until death faces one of them, and he says, Now have I repented indeed, nor of those who die rejecting faith. For them have we prepared a punishment most grievous. O you who believe, you are forbidden to inherit women against their will, nor should you treat them with harshness, that you may take away part of the dower you have given them, except where they have been guilty of open lewdness. On the contrary, live with them on a footing of kindness and equity. If you take a dislike to them, it may be that you dislike a thing, and Allah brings about through it a great deal of good. But if you decide to take one wife in place of another, even if you had given the latter a whole treasure for dower, take not the least bit of it back. Would you take it by slander and a manifest wrong? And how could you take it when you have gone unto each other, and they have taken from you a solemn covenant? And marry not women whom your father has married, except what is past. It was shameful and odious, an abominable custom indeed. Prohibited to you for marriage are your mothers, daughters, sisters, father's sisters, mother's sisters, brother's daughters, sister's daughters, foster mothers who gave you suck, foster sisters, your wives' mothers, your stepdaughters under your guardianship, born of your wives to whom you have gone in, no prohibition if you have not gone in, those who have been wives of your sons proceeding from your loins, and two sisters in wedlock at one and the same time, except for what is past, for Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Also prohibited are women already married, except those whom your right hands possess. Thus has Allah ordained prohibitions against you, except for these all others are lawful, provided you seek them in marriage with gifts from your property, desiring chastity, not lust, seeing that you derive benefit from them. Give them their dowers at least, as prescribed. But if after dowers prescribed, you agree mutually to vary it, there is no blame on you. And Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. If any of you have not the means wherewith to wed free believing women, they may wed believing girls from among those whom your right hands possess, and Allah has full knowledge about your faith. You are one from another. Wed them with the leave of their owners, and give them their dowers according to what is reasonable. They should be chaste, not lustful, nor taking paramours when they are taken in wedlock. If they fall into shame, their punishment is half that for free women. This permission is for those among you who fear sin. But it is better for you that you practice self-restraint. And Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Allah does wish to make clear to you and to show you the ordinances of those before you. And He does wish to turn to you in mercy and Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Allah does wish to turn to you. But the wish of those who follow their lusts is that you should turn away from him, far, far away. Allah does wish to lighten your difficulties, for man was created weak in flesh. O oh, you who believe, eat not up your property among yourselves in vanities, but let there be among you traffic and trade by mutual goodwill, nor kill or destroy yourselves, for verily Allah has been to you most merciful. If any do that in rancor and injustice, soon shall we cast them into the fire, and ease is it for Allah. If you but eschew the most heinous of these things, which you are forbidden to do, we shall expel out of you all the evil in you, and admit you to a gate of great honor. And in no wise covet those things in which Allah has bestowed his gifts more freely on some of you than on others. To men is allotted what they earn, and to women what they earn. But ask Allah of his bounty, for Allah has full knowledge of all things. To benefit everyone, we have appointed sharers and heirs, to property left by parents and relatives, to those also to whom your right hand was pledged. Give their due portion, for truly Allah is witness to all things. Husbands are the protectors and maintainers of their wives, because Allah has given the one more strength than the other and because they support them from their means. Therefore the righteous women are devoutly obedient, and guard in the husband's absence what Allah would have them guard. 
As to those women on whose part you fear disloyalty and ill conduct, admonish them first. Next, refuse to share their beds. And last, beat them lightly. But if they return to obedience, seek not against them means of annoyance. For Allah is most high, great, above you all. If you fear a breach between them two, appoint two arbiters, one from his family and the other from hers. If they wish for peace, Allah will cause their reconciliation. For Allah has full knowledge and is acquainted with all things. Serve Allah and join not any partners with Him and do good to parents, kinsfolk, orphans, those in need, neighbors who are near, neighbors who are strangers, the companion by your side, the wayfarer you meet and what your right hands possess. For Allah loves not the arrogant the vainglorious, nor those who are niggardly or enjoin niggardliness on others or hide the bounties which Allah has bestowed on them. For we have prepared for those who resist faith a punishment that steeps them in contempt. Nor those who spend of their substance to be seen of men but have no faith in Allah and the last day. If any take the evil one for their intimate, what a dreadful intimate he is. And what burden were it on them if they had faith in Allah and in the last day, and they spent out of what Allah has given them for sustenance, for Allah has full knowledge of them. Allah is never unjust in the least degree. If there is any good done, He doubles it, and gives from His own presence a great reward. How then if we brought from each people a witness, and we brought you as a witness against these people? On that day those who reject faith and disobey the messenger will wish that the earth were made one with them, but never will they hide a single fact from Allah. O you who believe, approach not prayers with a mind befogged until you can understand all that you say, nor in a state of ceremonial impurity, except when traveling on the road, until after washing your whole body, if you are ill or on a journey, or one of you comes from offices of nature, or you have been in contact with women, and you find no water, then take for yourselves clean sand or earth, and rub therewith your faces and hands, for Allah does blot out sins and forgive again and again. Have you not turned your vision to those who were given a portion of the book? They traffic in error, and wish that you should lose the right path. But Allah has full knowledge of your enemies. Allah is enough for a protector and Allah is enough for a helper. Of the Jews there are those who displace words from their right places, and say, We hear, and we disobey, and hear, may you not hear, and Ra'ina, with a twist of their tongues and a slander to faith, if only they had said, We hear, and we obey, and do hear, and do look at us, it would have been better for them, and more proper. But Allah has cursed them for their unbelief, and but few of them will believe. O you people of the book, believe in what we have now revealed, confirming what was already with you, before we change the face and fame of some of you beyond all recognition, and turn them hindwards, or curse them as we curse the Sabbath breakers, for the decision of Allah must be carried out. Allah forgives not that partners should be set up with him, but he forgives anything else, to whom he pleases. To set up partners with Allah is to devise a sin most heinous indeed. Have you not turned your vision to those who claim sanctity for themselves? Nay, but Allah does sanctify whom he pleases, but never will they fail to receive justice in the least little thing. Behold, how they invent a lie against Allah, but that by itself is a manifest sin. Have you not turned your vision to those who were given a portion of the book? They believe in sorcery and evil, and say to the unbelievers that they are better guided in the right way than the believers. They are men whom Allah has cursed, and those whom Allah has cursed, you will find have no one to help. Have they a share in dominion or power? Behold, they give not a farthing to their fellow men. Or do they envy mankind for what Allah has given them of his bounty? But we had already given the people of Abram the book and wisdom, 
and conferred upon them a great kingdom. Some of them believed, and some of them averted their faces from him, and enough is hell for a burning fire. Those who reject our signs, we shall soon cast into the fire. As often as their skins are roasted through, we shall change them for fresh skins, that they may taste the penalty, for Allah is exalted in power, wise. But those who believe and do deeds of righteousness, we shall soon admit to gardens, with rivers flowing beneath, their eternal home. Therein shall they have companions pure and holy, we shall admit them to shades, cool and ever-deepening. Allah does command you to render back your trust to those whom they are due, and when you judge between man and man, that you judge with justice. Verily how excellent is the teaching which he gives you, for Allah is he who hears and sees all things. O you who believe, obey Allah, and obey the Messenger, and those charged with authority among you. If you differ in anything among yourselves, refer it to Allah and his Messenger. If you do believe in Allah and the last day, that is best and most suitable for final determination. Have you not turned your vision to those who declare that they believe in the revelations that have come to you, and to those before you? Their real wish is to resort together for judgment in their disputes to the evil one, though they were ordered to reject him. But Satan's wish is to lead them astray, far away from the right. When it is said to them, Come to what Allah has revealed, and to the Messenger, you see the hypocrites avert their faces from you in disgust. How then, when they are seized by misfortune, because of the deeds which their hands have sent forth, then they come to you, swearing by Allah, we meant no more than goodwill and conciliation. Those men, Allah knows what is in their hearts, so keep clear of them, but admonish them and speak to them a word to reach their very souls. We sent not a messenger, but to be obeyed in accordance with the will of Allah. If they had only when they were unjust to themselves come unto you and ask Allah's forgiveness, and the messenger had asked forgiveness for them, they would have found Allah indeed after returning most merciful. But no, by the Lord, they can have no real faith until they make you judge in all disputes between them and find in their souls no resistance against your decisions, but accept them with the fullest conviction. If we had ordered them to sacrifice their lives or to leave their homes, very few of them would have done it. But if they had done what they were actually told, it would have been best for them and would have gone farthest to strengthen their faith. And we should then have given them from our presence a great reward. And we should have shown them the straight way. All who obey Allah and the Messenger are in the company of those on whom is the grace of Allah, of the prophets who teach, the sincere lovers of truth, the witnesses who testify, and the righteous who do good. Ah, what a beautiful fellowship! Such is the bounty from Allah, and sufficient is it that Allah knows all. O oh, you who believe, take your precautions, and either go forth in parties or go forth altogether. There are certainly among you men who would tarry behind if a misfortune befalls you. They say Allah did favor us in that we were not present among them. But if good fortune comes to you from Allah, they would be sure to say, as if there had never been ties of affection between you and them, Oh, I wish I had been with them. A fine thing should I then have made of it. Let those fight in the cause of Allah who sell the life of this world for the year after. To him who fights in the cause of Allah, whether he is slain or gets victory, soon shall we give him a reward of great value. And why should you not fight in the cause of Allah and of those who being weak are ill-treated and oppressed, men, women, and children, whose cry is, Our Lord, rescue us from this town, whose people are oppressors, and raise for us from you one who will protect, and raise for us from you one who will help. Those who believe fight in the cause of Allah, and those who reject faith fight in the cause of evil. So fight you against the friends of Satan. Feeble indeed is the cunning of Satan. Have you not turned your vision to those who were told to hold back their hands from fight, 
but establish regular prayers and spend in regular charity. When, at length, the order for fighting was issued to them, behold, a section of them feared men as, or even more than, they should have feared Allah. They said, Our Lord, why have you ordered us to fight? Would you not grant us respite to our natural term? Near enough. Say, short is the enjoyment of this world. The hereafter is the best for those who do right. Never will you be dealt with unjustly in the very least. Wherever you are, death will find you out, even if you are in towers built up strong and high. If some good befalls them, they say, This is from Allah. But if evil, they say, This is from you, O Prophet. Say, All things are from Allah. But what has come to these people, that they fail to understand a single fact. Whatever good, O oh man, happens to you is from Allah, but whatever evil happens to you is from your own soul. And we have sent you as a messenger to instruct mankind and enough is Allah for a witness. He who obeys the messenger obeys Allah, but if any turn away, we have not sent you to watch over their evil deeds. They have obedience on their lips. But when they leave you, a section of them meditate all night on things very different from what you tell them. But Allah records their nightly plots. So keep clear of them and put your trust in Allah. And enough is Allah as a disposer of affairs. Do they not consider the Qur'an with care? Had it been from other than Allah, they would surely have found therein much discrepancy. When there comes to them some matter touching public safety or fear, they divulge it. If they had only referred it to the messenger or to those charged with authority among them, the proper investigators would have tested it from them direct. Were it not for the grace and mercy of Allah unto you, all but a few of you would have followed Satan. Then fight in Allah's cause. You are held responsible only for yourself and rouse the believers. It may be that Allah will restrain the fury of the unbelievers, for Allah is the strongest in might and in punishment. Whoever recommends and helps a good cause becomes a partner therein, and whoever recommends and helps an evil cause shares in its burden, and Allah has power over all things. When a courteous greeting is offered you, meet it with a greeting still more courteous, or at least of equal courtesy. Allah takes careful account of all things. Allah, there is no God but He. Of a surety He will gather you together against the day of judgment, about which there is no doubt, and whose word can be truer than Allah's. Why should you be divided into two parties about the hypocrites? Allah has upset them for their evil deeds. Would you guide those whom Allah has thrown out of the way? For those whom Allah has thrown out of the way, never shall you find the way. They but wish that you should reject faith, as they do, and thus be on the same footing as they. So take not friends from their ranks, until they flee in the way of Allah, from what is forbidden. But, if they turn renegades, seize them and slay them, wherever you find them. And, in any case, take no friends or helpers from their ranks. Except those who join a group between whom and you there is a treaty of peace or those who approach you with hearts, restraining them from fighting you, as well as fighting their own people. If Allah had pleased, He could have given them power over you, and they would have fought you. Therefore, if they withdraw from you, but fight you not, and instead send you guarantees of peace, then Allah has opened no way for you to war against them. Others you will find that wish to gain your confidence as well as that of their people. Every time they are sent back to temptation, they succumb thereto, if they withdraw not from you, nor give you guarantees of peace besides restraining their hands. Seize them and slay them wherever you get them. In their case, we have provided you with a clear argument against them. Never should a believer kill a believer, but if it so happens by mistake, compensation is due. If one so kills a believer, it is ordained that he should free a believing slave and pay compensation to the deceased's family, unless they remit it freely. If the deceased belonged to a people at war with you, and he was a believer, the freeing of a believing slave is enough. If he belonged to a people with whom you have a treaty of mutual alliance, 
compensation should be paid to his family, and a believing slave be freed. For those who find this beyond their means, is prescribed a fast for two months running, by way of repentance to Allah. For Allah has all knowledge and all wisdom. If a man kills a believer intentionally, his recompense is hell, to abide therein forever, and the wrath and the curse of Allah are upon him, and a dreadful penalty is prepared for him. O oh, you who believe, when you go abroad in the cause of Allah, investigate carefully and say not to anyone who offers you a salutation, You are not a believer, coveting the perishable goods of this life. With Allah are prophets and spoils abundant. Even thus were you yourselves before, till Allah conferred on you his favors. Therefore, carefully investigate, for Allah is well aware of all that you do. Not equal are those believers who sit at home and receive no hurt, and those who strive and fight in the cause of Allah with their goods and their persons. Allah has granted a grade higher to those who strive and fight with their goods and persons than to those who sit at home, and to all in faith has Allah promised good. But those who strive and fight has He distinguished above those who sit at home by a special reward. Ranks specially bestowed by Him and forgiveness and mercy, for Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. When angels take the souls of those who die in sin against their souls, they say, In what plight were you? They reply, Weak and oppressed were we in the earth. They say, Was not the earth of Allah spacious enough for you to move yourselves away from evil? Such men will find their abode in hell. What an evil refuge! Except those who are really weak and oppressed, men, women, and children, who have no means in their power, nor a guidepost to direct their way. For these there is hope that Allah will forgive, for Allah does blot out sins and forgive again and again. He who forsakes his home in the cause of Allah finds in the earth many a refuge, wide and spacious. Should he die as a refugee from home, for Allah and his messenger, his reward becomes due and sure with Allah and Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. When you travel through the earth, there is no blame on you if you shorten your prayers, for fear the unbelievers may attack you, for the unbelievers are unto you open enemies. When you, O messenger, are with them, and stand to lead them in prayer, let one party of them stand up in prayer with you, taking their arms with them. When they finish their prostrations, let them take their position in the rear, and let the other party come up which has not yet prayed, and let them pray with you, taking all precautions and bearing arms. The unbelievers wish, if you were negligent of your arms and your baggage, to assault you in a single rush. But there is no blame on you, if you put away your arms because of the inconvenience of rain, or because you are ill, but take every precaution for yourselves. For the unbelievers, Allah has prepared a humiliating punishment. When you pass congregational prayers, celebrate Allah's praises, standing, sitting down, or lying down on your sides. But when you are free from danger, set up regular prayers, for such prayers are enjoined on believers at stated times. And slacken not in following up the enemy. If you are suffering hardships, they are suffering similar hardships. But you have hope from Allah, while they have none, and Allah is full of knowledge and wisdom. We have sent down to you the book in truth, that you might judge between men as guided by Allah, so be not used as an advocate by those who betray their trust. But seek the forgiveness of Allah, for Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Contend not on behalf of such as betray their own souls, for Allah loves not one given to perfidy and crime. They may hide their crimes from men, but they cannot hide them from Allah, seeing that He is with them when they plot by night, in words that He cannot approve, and Allah does compass round all that they do. Ah, these are the sort of men on whose behalf you may contend in this world, but who will contend with Allah on their behalf on the day of judgment, or who will carry their affairs through? 
If anyone does evil or wrongs his own soul, but afterwards seeks Allah's forgiveness, he will find Allah oft forgiving, most merciful. And if anyone earns sin, he earns it against his own soul, for Allah is full of knowledge and wisdom. But if anyone earns a fault or a sin and throws it onto one that is innocent, he carries on himself both a falsehood and a flagrant sin. But for the grace of Allah to you and his mercy, a party of them would certainly have plotted to lead you astray. But in fact, they will only lead their own souls astray, and to you they can do no harm in the least. For Allah has sent down to you the book and wisdom, and taught you what you knew not before. And great is the grace of Allah unto you. In most of their secret talks there is no good. But if one exhorts to a deed of charity or justice or conciliation between men, secrecy is permissible. To him who does this, seeking the good pleasure of Allah, we shall soon give a reward of the highest value. If anyone contends with the messenger even after guidance has been plainly conveyed to him and follows a path other than that becoming to men of faith, we shall leave him in the path he has chosen and land him in hell. What an evil refuge! Allah forgives not the sin of joining other gods with him, but he forgives whom he pleases other sins than this. One who joins other gods with Allah has strayed far, far away from the right. The pagans, leaving him, call but upon female deities. They call but upon Satan, the persistent rebel. Allah did curse him, but he said, I will take of your servants a portion, marked off. I will mislead them, and I will create in them false desires. I will order them to slit the ears of cattle, and to deface the fair nature created by Allah. Whoever, forsaking Allah, takes Satan for a friend, has of a surety suffered a loss that is manifest. Satan makes them promises and creates in them false desires, but Satan's promises are nothing but deception. They, his dupes, will have their dwelling in hell, and from it they will find no way of escape. But those who believe and do deeds of righteousness, we shall soon admit them to gardens, with rivers flowing beneath, to dwell therein forever. Allah's promise is the truth, and whose word can be truer than Allah's. Not your desires, nor those of the people of the book can prevail. Whoever works evil will be requited accordingly nor will he find besides Allah any protector or helper. If any do deeds of righteousness, be they male or female, and have faith, they will enter heaven, and not the least injustice will be done to them. Who can be better in religion than one who submits his whole self to Allah, does good, and follows the way of Abram the true in faith? For Allah did take Abram for a friend. But to Allah belong all things in the heavens and on earth, and He it is that encompasses all things. They ask your instruction concerning the woman. Say, Allah does instruct you about them, and remember what has been rehearsed unto you in the book, concerning the orphans of women to whom you give not the portions prescribed, and yet whom you desire to marry, as also concerning the children who are weak and oppressed, that you stand firm for justice to orphans. There is not a good deed which you do, but Allah is well acquainted therewith. If a wife fears cruelty or desertion on her husband's part, there is no blame on them if they arrange an amicable settlement between themselves. And such settlement is best, even though men's souls are swayed by greed. But if you do good and practice self-restraint, Allah is well acquainted with all that you do. You are never able to be fair and just as between women, even if it is your ardent desire. But turn not away from a woman altogether, so as to leave her, as it were, hanging in the air. If you mend your ways and practice self-restraint, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. But if they disagree and must part, Allah will provide abundance for all from His all-reaching bounty. For Allah is He that cares for all and is wise. To Allah belong all things in the heavens and on earth. Verily we have directed the people of the book before you, and you, O Muslims, to fear Allah. But if you deny him, though unto Allah belong all things in the heavens and on earth, and Allah is free of all wants, worthy of all praise. 
Yea, unto Allah belong all things in the heavens and on earth, and enough is Allah to carry through all affairs. If it were His will, He could destroy you, O mankind, and create another race, for He has power thus to do. If anyone desires a reward in this life, in Allah's gift is the reward, both of this life and of the hereafter. For Allah is He that hears and sees all things. O you who believe, stand out firmly for justice, as witnesses to Allah, even as against yourselves, or your parents, or your kin, and whether it be against rich or poor, for Allah can best protect both. Follow not the lusts of your hearts, lest you swerve. And if you distort justice or decline to do justice, verily Allah is well acquainted with all that you do. O you who believe, believe in Allah and His Messenger, and the scripture which He has sent to His Messenger, and the scripture which He sent to those before Him. Any who denies Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, and the Day of Judgment, has gone far, far astray. Those who believe then reject faith, then believe again and again reject faith, and go on increasing in unbelief, Allah will not forgive them, nor guide them on the way. To the hypocrites give the glad tidings that there is for them but a grievous penalty. Yea, to those who take for friends unbelievers rather than believers. Is it honor they seek among them? Nay, all honor is with Allah. Already has he sent you word in the book that when you hear the signs of Allah held in defiance and ridicule, you are not to sit with them unless they turn to a different theme. If you did, you would be like them, for Allah will collect the hypocrites and those who defy faith all in hell. These are the ones who wait and watch about you. If you do gain a victory from Allah, they say, Were we not with you? But if the unbelievers gain a success, they say to them, did we not gain an advantage over you? And did we not guard you from the believers? But Allah will judge between you on the day of judgment. And never will Allah grant to the unbelievers a way to triumph over the believers. The hypocrites, they think they are overreaching Allah, but He will overreach them. When they stand up to prayer, they stand without earnestness, to be seen of men, but little do they hold Allah in remembrance. They are distracted in mind, even in the midst of it, being sincerely for neither one group nor for another. Whom Allah leaves straying, never will you find for him the way. O you who believe, take not for friends unbelievers rather than believers. Do you wish to offer Allah an open proof against yourselves? The hypocrites will be in the lowest depths of the fire. No helper will you find for them. Except for those who repent, mend their life, hold fast to Allah, and purify their religion as in Allah's sight. If so, they will be numbered with the believers, and soon will Allah grant to the believers a reward of immense value. What can Allah gain by your punishment if you are grateful and you believe? Nay, it is Allah that recognizes all good and knows all things. Allah loves not that evil should be noised abroad in public speech, except where injustice has been done. For Allah is He who hears and knows all things. Whether you publish a good deed or conceal it, or cover evil with pardon, verily, Allah does blot out sins and has power in the judgment of values. Those who deny Allah and His messengers, and those who wish to separate Allah from His messengers, saying, We believe in some but reject others, and those who wish to take a course midway, they are in truth equally unbelievers, and we have prepared for unbelievers a humiliating punishment. To those who believe in Allah and His messengers, and make no distinction between any of the messengers, we shall soon give their due rewards, for Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. The people of the book ask you to cause a book to descend to them from heaven. Indeed, they asked Moses for an even greater miracle, for they said, Show us Allah in public. But they were dazed for their presumption by thunder and lightning. Yet they worshipped the calf, even after clear signs had come to them. Even so, we forgave them, and gave Moses manifest proofs of authority.
and for their covenant we raised over them the towering height of Mount Sinai, and on another occasion we said, Enter the gate with humility, and once again we commanded them, Transgress not in the matter of the Sabbath, and we took from them a solemn covenant. They have incurred divine displeasure in that they broke their covenant, that they rejected the signs of Allah, that they slew the messengers in defiance of right, that they said, Our hearts are the wrappings which preserve Allah's word, we need no more. Nay, Allah has set the seal on their hearts for their blasphemy, and little is it that they believe, that they rejected faith, that they uttered against Mary a grave false charge, that they said in boast, We killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, but they killed him not, nor crucified him, but so it was made to appear to them, and those who differ therein are full of doubts, with no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow, for of a surety they killed him not. Nay, Allah raised him up unto himself, and Allah is exalted in power, wise. And there is none of the people of the book but must believe in him before his death, and on the day of judgment he will be a witness against them. For the iniquity of the Jews we made unlawful for them, certain foods good and wholesome, which had been lawful for them, in that they hindered many from Allah's way. That they took usury, though they were forbidden, and that they devoured men's substance wrongfully, we have prepared for those among them who reject faith a grievous punishment. But those among them who are well grounded in knowledge and the believers believe in what has been revealed to you and what was revealed before you, and especially those who establish regular prayer and practice regular charity and believe in Allah and in the last day, to them shall we soon give a great reward. We have sent you inspiration as we sent it to Noah and the messengers after him. We sent inspiration to Abram, Ismail, Isaac, Jacob, and the descendants, to Jesus, Job, Jonah, Aaron, and Solomon, and to David we gave the Psalms. Of some messengers we have already told you the story, of others we have not, and to Moses Allah spoke direct. Messengers who gave good news as well as warning, that mankind, after the coming of the messengers, should have no plea against Allah, for Allah is exalted in power, wise. But Allah bears witness that what he has sent unto you, he has sent from his own knowledge, and the angels bear witness. But enough is Allah for a witness. Those who reject faith and keep off men from the way of Allah have verily strayed far, far away from the path. Those who reject faith and do wrong, Allah will not forgive them, nor guide them to any way, except the way of hell, to dwell therein forever, and this to Allah is easy. O mankind, the messenger has come to you in truth from Allah. Believe in him, it is best for you. But if you reject faith, to Allah belong all things in the heavens and on earth, and Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. O people of the book, commit no excesses in your religion, nor say of Allah aught but the truth. Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, was no more than a messenger of Allah, and his word, which he bestowed on Mary and a spirit proceeding from him, so believe in Allah and his messengers. Say not, Trinity, desist, it will be better for you, for Allah is one God, glory be to him, far exalted is he above having a son, to him belong all things in the heavens and on earth, and enough is Allah as a disposer of affairs. Christ disdains not to serve and worship Allah, nor do the angels, those nearest to Allah, those who disdain his worship and are arrogant, he will gather them all together unto himself to answer. But those who believe and do deeds of righteousness, he will give their due rewards, and more out of his bounty. But those who are disdainful and arrogant, he will punish with a grievous penalty. Nor will they find besides Allah any to protect or help them. O mankind, verily there has come to you a convincing proof from your Lord, 
for we have sent unto you a light that is manifest. Then those who believe in Allah and hold fast to him, soon will he admit them to mercy and grace from himself, and guide them to himself by a straight way. They ask you for a legal decision. Say, Allah directs thus about those who leave no descendants or ascendants as heirs. If it is a man that dies, leaving a sister but no child, she shall have half the inheritance. If such a deceased was a woman who left no child, her brother takes her inheritance. If there are two sisters, they shall have two-thirds of the inheritance between them. If they are brothers and sisters, they share, the male having twice the share of the female. Thus does Allah make clear to you his law, lest you err, and Allah has knowledge of all things.